Good evening, everyone. Tonight we got Kevin. He's going to show us how to make our videos better on matrices and projectors. Take it away, Kevin. Hey, thanks, John. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, I've been doing X Lights now for four years, and really want to thank all the people in this room I mean, that really helped make this video possible. I've, you know, recently, I've been helping out more, but in the first couple of years, I listened a lot, and learned a lot, asked a lot of questions, and and sought out problems to fix some of the things that I was working on. So I'm more comfortable with the uh, PowerPoint a little bit, but then we'll get into uh, using X slides directly. So what is this all about? Well, this is, let me first of all say, this is not about how to install a projector in X slides. Um, this is not about how to do a virtual matrix. There are tons and tons of videos on that topic, very good videos. What there is a lack of is how to optimize video in X lights to optimize the investment, whether it be projector or a, a, a matrix, a P5 matrix with who knows how many panels or a, a garage matrix potentially. Um, it's all about resolution though, you'll see in the thing. And you know, one of the things that I ran into was a couple of problems. You know, I wanted, this is my problem in my second year, leading me not even to put a projector in my house the, my second year. You know, I put a video projector out and the images are blurry. The projector was a, a high-end uh, 1080p uh, short throw projector, Optima brand. Um, that is one thing that I will say about projector matrices. You want to have a brand that is well known um, and you want a short throw projector with at least 3,500 3, to 4,000 lumens. And the reason is that a, a projector has to compete with a thing called pixels because you're going to be putting these projectors in, uh, in a display with lots of light. Should I get a new projector? So this is what the issue is. So everybody, you, know, you download a, let me show the video. You download a video from, from the internet. Looks really great. You know, I can't wait to get this video on my display. So the conventional wisdom is to create a 1080 by 192p virtual matrix, uh, and then uh, essentially uh, output that put that on your display, and you can uh, then uh, have that as your matrix. I will say, if you're downloading videos from YouTube um, and you don't intend to add any effects to them, you should not even put them into X lights, in my opinion. With one caveat, which we'll explain about the best resolution for a matrix is the highest resolution video that your projector will take. So if you have a 1080p projector, download a 1080p video, put an FPP as a virtual projector, uh, FP, name it the same name as your audio and your sequence, put that put that player into remote mode, turn on multi-sync in your main player, and you're off to the races. Well, the thing was that what was happening to me was, you listen to that, I, I in my naivete, put the sequences into X lights and F export FC files, then my videos began to look like this. And let's just say I wasn't happy. And if anybody else should have experienced this, that, hey, wait a minute, you know, my videos are terrible or use any adjective you want, how am I, how can I make them better? So, you know, and I want to add the video display. And when, so the other problem is, okay, so fine. I understand if I download effects from the internet and put the, I can put them on my FPP player, great. But I really do want to add effects to my video. And what do I have to do for that? Well, this, this is an example. So this is a Crowder song. And this is what you want to be able to do. So you want to be, be able to take a video and create create a video like this uh, that allows you to essentially have some fun with creating videos. The, the problem is that, you know, in this, there are ways to do this. How can you, the question really is, you look at that last video, how in goodness gracious do you create a video of this quality, yet based on the last video, it's not possible. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you it is possible, but you have to begin to rethink video and X lights a little bit. You, you have to begin to think of X lights not only as a, a pixel sequencer, but as a video production tool. 
and a tool that can create relatively higher resolution videos, and we'll talk about that, that allow you to create very interesting sequences that have uh, incorporate elements of video downloaded from the internet and the, the material that has been given to us by sequencers. And I will say up front, I don't consider myself a sequencer, but I do con consider my self is someone who knows how to map sequences and how to adapt sequences to my display in very unique ways that really help my display uh, essentially stand out in my opinion. So some of you overachievers out there that have huge video matrices in their display that they can be seen from space and you know but it takes forever for the sequence to render and then the FSeq files are huge. Not that anybody in this room may have experienced that and the question is, so what do we do about that situation? Well, and the other thing too is all these cool AI images are being created. How in goodness gracious do I get images into my display that meet, meet, match the quality that AI can create? And finally, how do you put images of Jonathan Goldsmith as the most interesting Santa in the world in your display? This is That was the prompt that I use, and this is what the AI uh, algorithm sent back to me. So how do you take images that are being created at the internet and move them into your display in a way that makes your dis those images pop and candidly your, your sequence be really interesting, most interesting sequences in the world. So with that, this is fundamental. So you know, we're all looking at this at different resolutions, but the white screen around this in, in my display that I'm showing tonight is a 1080 by 190 key display. So if you render your matrix at 108 by 192, it looks great as a postage stamp in the middle of this big screen. But when you pop that up to high resolution, so much for the ability for that video to still look good. Essentially what's happening, there isn't enough data, isn't enough pixel data in this smaller 1080p, the 108, 192 image to give you the resolution you want in order for you to have a display that looks half decent. So again, in this, this is an example of the 108, 192. Well, it's possible to then begin to consider increasing the quality of the display from the 18 to 216 by 384, essentially quadrupling the size of the number of pixels. But you can begin to see the improvement of the video to, to enable the, the picture to look good. And then the, there's clearly a better difference. And even it, it's, it's even less noticeable as you play a video as the video plays fast. But hey, it, 216, why don't I even go higher? Let me go to 432. And obviously now we're, now we're talking 432 by 768. We're also talking a file now that's gonna turn out to be about a, a gig. And it's also gonna be a million channels of data. So how in goodness gracious, and oh, by the way, these files take a, a long time to render. Even with, I, I have a Windows machine, but I suspect even with the Macintosh, but that's not the, 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 we have ways of getting around that. But the essential thing is then how, what's the sweet spot and how do we begin to enable the ability to create high resolution displays in our sequences, but not adversely affect the rendering of the sequences we're doing otherwise and potentially enable us to create sequences that are much smaller but do things with our matrices and our, our displays, our virtual displays that allow us to have the best quality on devices that have high pixel density, yet also keep the sequencing time and the rendering time down for the rest of the, the elements in my display. Th this is also for effects too. This is an example of a 108, 192 matrix. And you can see, and then let me get this right. So. You can begin to see this when I run this. So the matrix on the left is 108, 192. Matrix on the left, I'm gonna stop it right at the right time. Matrix on the left, basically the idea is that as you increase, one of the things about x lights effects, they're very raggedy. And resolution is really defined. You can really begin to see it if you begin to look at these images. And the, this is aliasing, it's called. And this is the computer trying to make this, the image bigger, but it doesn't have enough effects. So it has to render the image not as precisely that it otherwise could. 
But it's interesting, X lights can render images even higher. So see the difference in, this is a 432 by 768 display. Notice there's still aliasing there, but the further you get away, you're not gonna notice this. And you know, again, it's a very good picture, but the rendering time is much greater than that 108216 matrix. So the fundamental question is how do we begin to enable some of these knowledges. Yeah, I wanna to get to that resolution, but I don't wanna take the time to do it. I don't want my sequences to be big. I really want the best of both worlds. And it's also, this is an example of a video that's rendered at 108p. And you can really see it in, in as I said, especially in sequences, you can see this is the 108 sequence. And just think of when this image gets put up to the 1080 to 190p as it is now. So that, again, that poster stamp is being blown up to this size image. And you can really see how jaggy it is, how blah it looks. And this, this is the definition of why my projector stinks. I need another one. Well, your projector doesn't stink. Your, your sequences and the videos you're putting on the projector stinks. And again, this is the this is the 384, the doubling, just doubling the matrix size, how improved the, the images get and the video gets. Same and the interesting is the same sequence data, but it, it allows you to show. So this is X lights having the same sequence data, but rendering it a higher resolution to improve the video. And that's funny what we're going to be talking about for the next 30 or 40 minutes is what are the steps to do that? How do I manage this in my display and, you know, how to incorporate it? And my, my opinion is if you understand what we're about to do, by the end of this, you'll understand what to do to render a high resolution matrices and understand that it is possible to do, takes a couple extra steps. But in my opinion, it'll make your displays pop when it comes to, to matrices and what have you. This is just a final, one of my last, next to last slides. And we'll talk all about x lights from now on. And, and this is what we're talking about. You know, the obvious thing is, why can't I just render my, my videos at 1080 by 1920? Well, two problems with that. It's a $6 million, six, sorry, 6 million channel display. And that's close to the limit of FPP. And if you look, 108, 192, it's only 10% of that. Of course, it's only going to be 620 channels. And, but then if we move it up to four times, that becomes the million. But you're going to see in a few minutes, we're actually going to leverage the other way that we're going to, we're going to be using this. And I'll show it in my home display. This is in my regular sequence display. This is the render size of the matrices that I have in my display when I'm doing my sequences. But I, I will tell you, in my display, the, the videos that I'm using, depending upon if it has a lot of video or a lot of sequences, if it's mostly video or very little sequence data, I do use the 216. But if it has a lot of uh, sequence uh, type effects, I actually render it for 32, 768, because in my opinion, it looks much better. Now, one of the things that I found interesting in, in investigating this, there traditionally, there's been a big gulf between this, the, the, the ability to, you know, put make videos in your display. And it was kind of like we only had two choices. If you're going to get YouTube videos, you always just put them in on your video projector and call it a day. But anytime you want to, you know, you want to put a, a virtual matrix in your display with effects on it, using effects, you always have to use the 108, 192 and generate FSeq data. I'm here to tell you that there is no, there does not need to be a gap. There is a middle ground, and this is what we're going to be talking about. Between the 108, 192, and between range videos, we're going to fill in this gap right here to explain there is a choice between what I heretofore thought was kind of unrealistic, you know, left or right choice. I, knew, I, I basically try to discover a way to bridge this gap, to give me high resolution videos, to make my sequences reasonable to manage, and, and allow me to create the displays that were really cool, in my opinion, for myself, my neighbors, and, and friends. So not X lights. Let's stop this.
Okay. So getting back, this is this is a, a song downloaded from the internet net. And this is a sequence. All the sequences I'm going to be showing you today are basically professional sequences that I purchased. And this is a sequence from Pixel, Pixel Perfect Displays, the Elf song from last year. And the matrix we're going to be using is this matrix right here. So a nice display, lots of effects. But when I saw the matrix here, you know, once the video came out, I said, I might be able to have some fun. So at this point, I just want you to watch the matrix here and watch the effects on the matrix. We're going to be using those in a couple of minutes here. So there is, once you see the little Alfie guy going on there, he's on the tree. He's basically, there's Santa dancing. You get the idea. So, but, so we take, we take that display we, and then what we do is we look at the, you can download the song. This is going to be a downloaded video from the internet. I personally use a, a application called Clip Grab. They're all, you know, as long as you can get 1080p videos. So this is the video. So the, the question is then, how are we going to merge those two together? Replace the matrix with sequences as well as put the put the ability so eventually going to get to a video like this. So now what we've done is we've we've married or combined a, what I consider a high resolution video with uh, with the effects that are on the matrix. And we're about to show you how to do this. What I'm going to be introducing to you all is the concept of a, we all talk about show folders. We have a Halloween folder. We have a Christmas folder. I'm going to introduce you to, this is my layout for, for, for sequencing matrices. Uh, it consists of three matrices. And this matrix is a 108192. This one's 108192. When I'm importing, I import the sequence effects to this matrix. This matrix is what I call what is the video matrix. So I input the video file to this matrix. It's also a 108192 matrix. And this matrix is my what I call my rendering matrix. This is what actually I'm going to be using to create effects on. And that's going to be the, the source material for the videos that I'm up. Well, I'll show you how to export. Um, so uh, essentially what's done, it's the same. It's it, There's nothing different about how creating these sequence. Let's discard changes. We're going to create a musical sequence. Um, let's see where you want our videos is on the desktop. And the Crowder, the Crowder, the F song is the MP3, MP3 file is this one. But we're not going to create a 20 or 40 frame per second sequence. We're going to do 30 frames per second. And why is because the videos that come down from YouTube are 30 frames a second. It makes no sense to create a video at higher resolution when your background source material is uh, such that you don't need the 40 frames. You'll be seeing our subsequent videos. I do use talking faces in my display, but in the context of 30 frames per second is more than adequate. What's nice about 30 frames per second is that it gives you good resolution, but it limits the need to go to the 40 frames, which effectively is 50% more. So you're kind of, you're, you're increasing your, the fidelity of your sequencing and the information on your matrix, but keeping it the same resolution as broadcast television, which is 30 frames a second. So, and then we say done. The next phase is what you've done hundreds of times, it's import effects. And we, we have the Elf song, it's in this file. We're gonna do a two-step in, in, import. We're gonna map the matrix effects to the 108 matrix and also to the rendering matrix. We're gonna say, okay, yes. We'll come back to this, get rid of the house preview. So there's our matrix view. We're gonna get rid of beats. We're gonna make this window a little bigger. The next thing we're gonna do is add two video effects to this matrix. 
the first the first video is actually going to go on to the matrix 180p video here so it's very simple matrix effect video effect on the matrix we're going to add two rows why because it's easier when we're going to start to delete effects in a couple of seconds we're going to add multiple areas below i usually add two to the rendering matrix and then we're going to add a video effect to the rendering matrix bingo and there it is now because this is a because this is a zoom video we're going to cut down this, this check the sequence settings we're going to cut the sequence down to 60 seconds to, just to show you how this works done we're going to render it's rendering all so now what it's doing it's going to create three representations of the video one is the one below is obviously the video the one above is the sequence itself and the rendering matrix which will be showing up on the right is a combination of the two a couple of things about when you increase the size most sequences are anticipating that you're going to be you're going to be showing and rendering your displays at 108 192 or less it's important to understand that because we are now doubling the size of the matrix and that if you have pictures in your display pictures in the in in the matrix like the elves flying by they'll be too small potentially and you can see it's beginning to show up see how small the elf on the right is compared to the left so one of the things we're going to have to accompanate for is this elf needs to get bigger if you like little elves and you can keep it the same way i think it still needs to be bigger maybe not as big as this guy over here but one of the things so one of the things the first thing i do i just i just watch and I decide, I decide what what's available to me in the sequence. How am I going to how am I going to use those effects? Now, what I did is I put the effects above the, the video, so the effects are, are rendering on top of the video. And in this case, it's pretty distracting. In other situations, we'll see in a couple. Another example is it it can be actually pretty interesting. So, but what we're going to do? So, we decide, what, so what we decided we're going to get get ahead here. So what I decided I was going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the effects that didn't have to do with elves and Santa, which are these. And then we're also going to get rid of the effects here. Bingo. And now we're left. So now we're left with effects of the elf. This is the elf. And we're going to move this guy over here. And what we're going to begin to do is scale the effects down. We're going to take the effects and we're going to begin to scale them so what what, what typically we you can do is scale keep aspect ratio and that'll increase the size of the, the, the to the elf and then allow you to begin to essentially have the thing it'll it'll render itself but see now the elf is bigger you can you can actually make it even bigger than that but just for the purposes of this discussion we're going to be pretty straightforward and uh, just increase it just a little bit and the same thing. Now we know this and one. Now we know this one. Somebody's on unmute. Somebody's on unmute. All right, buddy. So essentially, what you have to do is find the effects, and then essentially find them, and then resize them. So uh, we're just going to just case scale to fit. We're just going to say scale to fit. It is possible to batch render these, but I don't want to get into that right now because I think it will just make this prop topic is probably more complicated and you scale them, scale to fit. And then you're just going to render all. It's going to take hopefully about 22 seconds. So now what we have is essentially a matrix video that takes the effects that we wanted from the sequence and the video from, from the commercial download melding them into a bigger a bigger matrix uh and that that video that's going to be created from this matrix is actually going to be the matrix so now we see the video is ready um we'll just play just to prove go back and so 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 the effects are gone that are originally there but there's our elf ready to go. And there's our Santa dancing. 
Now, I will say Santa Dance, you can see, you know, so we have about the same proportion. The reason they, they, they did a, they would put it in the display in a window, but you get the idea. So you, there, there is no right or wrong way to do this. Um, but it, it enables you then to create a, perhaps a, a more interesting video or you even might not do that. But now we've done that. So what we have to do now is go into the render matrix model. Uh, we've already rendered our thing. We just have to go export and we want to export it as an uncompressed video MP4. And we're just going to make it test. Test rendering MP4. It's going to export the video. So now what is it, it's, it's doing is exporting an MP4 video. What we'll have to do then is to change the name of the video to the name of our song. And then that can be put up to FPP and the, the sequence will be ready to go. So I've covered a lot. Are there any questions at this point as far as this whole process? So the idea, any questions or comments? I can st stop here for a second. So your I rendering matrix model is your full resolution, your 1080p? No, the rent the rendering matrix model is a uh, is I'm going back here. I'll just show you the layout of this matrix is 218, 384. And like I said, I can go I go higher than that on on you know to to if I want to. So the video resolution is going to be 218, 384. I, I can tell you in my experience, and I'll show you a video in a second, it's more than adequate to make a projector look really good, uh, even at 30 feet away. Um, obviously, the further away you get, it looks even better. That's the nature of videos. You're, you know, you, the, the further you get away, the, the better it looks, so to speak. Um, but it's not, it's four times the resolution of the usual 108 to 216. Or, right. Oh, 108, 192. Sorry. 192, yeah. Yeah. And just to show, um, in my, it's in my folder. I just want to get to the right folder here. The problem with having multiple displays is gets to be tough. It's great when you're doing sequencing or sequence sequences. So it's in my matrix rendering folder. And we go to rendering matrix. It didn't get there. That's weird. Well, this is these are examples of the MP4 videos done. Um, and so this is the video. These are the videos that were rendered. And they're, this is what I upload to my projector, these videos here. Um, and uh, maybe it's got into the matrix rendering folder. Oh, here it is right here. I just didn't get it further. It's 22 kilobits in this case, but it's only 60 seconds. So there, there's the, now the other thing, this does not have any video, so it doesn't have any audio associated with it, but that this is the video that's going to get into my display or, you know, hypothetically. It, just get, and there's, there's our else, like, you know, all set to go. Um, it'll be synced to our music and we're off to the next, we're done. We're off to the next. So um, now the question is too, what do you do with your sequence? Well, it tur turns out you do not have to put the matrix in your your display at all. I mean, the you know, some of us are probably get driven driving crazy by that. But this is my layout for the Elf the song. And what I do in my own displays is I do have a matrix in my display. It's twenty seven by forty three. Um, you'll, you'll see in, in my display, these matrices actually have the original sequences and that, so even though I did not put in this case, a lot of these effects on this matrix, they'll be showing up on this, this matrix and the sequencer and hope this is still rendered. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. You get almost no sequence data in that, but it, at least you know, kind of sort of know how it's going to look like, but you know, it's going to look a lot better than that. So this is the, the sequence imported. The, the matrix effects that we, we eliminated are actually being showing up on these matrices here. But now we've got some interesting stuff and just picture kids, you know, dancing in the driveway. Um, but this so but you do not have to put this matrix in your display. The key, though, is that the, the video has to get to FPP and it has to be exactly the same, uh, the same audio name as the, the, the sequence that you're doing. 
So, and just to show you what it looks like in real life, we'll get rid of this. And this is the sequence in my display last year. So you can see, this is my projector in front of the thing. It's about five and a half, six feet away. Uh, my garage is seven foot tall. So this display, I think it's about, my garage is 16 or 18 feet wide. So this is about a 13 foot wide display um, with a 1080p short throw projector. Um, it's it's all weather, it's connected, uh, it's connect. I've got, you know, just, just for full disclosure, as yeah, a power cord, I actually didn't run FPP wireless this year because I have my, one of my, one of my main uh, bo control boxes right here. So I had network right behind there anyways. And I also put a steel cable because this is a relatively expensive box and I want it to be available when I want to watch football games in the fall, you know, just saying. Um, so that's that's what it looks like in my display. So any questions now? I'm going to move on to a couple other examples. So the, the idea is you have a sequence created by somebody. They've done one of the vendors. And, and you take that uh, information, and then you create a higher resolution version of it. So the next example I'm going to show you is um, a showstopper sequence from last year, Fancy Like. Oops, that's too loud. And in this display, the matrix that we're going to be using is this up here. Walker Hayes, uh, thanks to Mike, this is a great, uh, you know, talking head that I was able to use that made this really look cool. Um, so what we're going to be doing is taking the raw sequence. What I did, we're not going to do the whole, the whole process, but we're going to be taking the raw sequence data from this matrix and using it into another sequence. So we have we have the, the the pixel or the sequence data that we're going to use. So the question is, are the you know one of the things of discovery is, are you going to uh, have the matrix you know have go to the official video? You go on YouTube, find the official video, and so this is this is the official video. You, you find this, you download this to the internet. That becomes the, uh, the 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 basically the case for the raw material for for your video. Nice video, nothing wrong, but it turned out in this song, we had uh, other options, so to speak. And it turned out it was available a fan-based video, which actually was, I thought much more interesting. So how, how would you start thinking about it? How would you merge the sequence data and you know this video. So we have Walker Hayes singing in the middle of this. You know, just think about how. Just think, and we'll give you ten seconds. How would you take this video and the stuff that I've shown? You've got Walker Hayes talking face and a song where you know, um, you know, that has some possibilities to it. So um, what we what we did. Let's get rid of these. Move more back on the other screen. So we're going to get our fancy ring of trainer. Where are you? Router, you're done with. Fancy like. Oops. We need our matrix display. Hey, Kevin, yes. while you're doing that, yep. what, uh, what uh, kind of projector are you using for that short throw to get that size? Well, that, it's, it's, it's basically, if you have a short throw that does, it's what you want to look for in a short throw projector is the ratio of the, the, the distance away from the screen to the width of the image. And what you're looking for is what's, it's a 0.5 projector. And so you're looking for, there's a, you'll see it, it'll short throw, but you want to look for one's about 0.5, which means as you move the projector back a foot, you get twice as much width. Does that make sense? So that happens to be an Optima 1080p, 1080p projector. It's now three or four years old. It's, they don't even make it anymore. Um, but Epson creates a good projector. A lot of the people that are in projection, one of the things about projectors 
is unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, we our colleagues that do projection mapping want the same, this same type of projector. So they're on eBay all the time looking for higher value projectors that, you know, they're used and stuff. But I know uh, uh, a colleague of our, ours in, uh, in, here in the Houston area uh, pick, scored a Epson 530 projector. And, um, and it was under, under two, I believe under 300, probably closer to $200. But there's a 530, which they would talk Epson 530, but there's also a 535, a little bit more expensive. The high, high, high ender stuff, you're talking over $1,000, they're laser based. Um, you can't really don't really need those. And the good news too, is that lasers are becoming more, more prevalent. So the, the bulb projectors that have like halogen bulbs in them are, are actually showing up on eBay as people get rid of the quote unquote used uh, video projectors. So keep an eye on eBay. Do not buy the cheap projectors you see on Amazon. They just will not work. Um, so, you know, they, you have to get, you have to look for a short throw and get a name that you understand, you, you know, uh, you know, uh, Epson, ViewSonic, and then there's, there's Optima, there is BenQ, I'm blanking the other two, but you want brand names. You do not want names you've never heard of. And, and that's a good, you know, so, okay. okay. So, Thank you. That, that makes sense. Okay. Any other questions before I do this? No problem with rear projection. Works the same. I I, I would assume it would be the same. In my case, you'd see my garage, so that's not cool. But yes, there's <laughs> the rear projection would ex work exactly the same. Okay. So this is a sequence. It's already we've already gone through the process. So now that you had a time to think, so we did com we did combine the Walker Hayes uh, video, um, but what, let me hopefully this will play without having to render. No, never mind. Okay, let me just make this sequence. Make sure it's reference sequence. So this is at thirty cents. We're going to just decrease the sequence duration to um, you know, just do forty seconds, just just so we don't spend time forever in a day. Um, So what we did in this sequence was we took the Walker Hayes video and of the, the, the video of people singing, and then we use singing faces on a matrix. I'm just hoping this is the right. Yeah. So essentially what we're going to be, what we did is we took Walker Hayes video and this is Walker Hayes singing. Hopefully so. Hopefully you see, but say there's Walker Hayes going to be on the video. So we married the video again, just like we said, we have a video below. The effects above is Walker Hayes, but then we had some fun. We did a little bit more than that. We said, "Well, I can't. I, you know, Walker is good, but can't, you know, I can't. I can't." So, if you see what we did, is we began to use. It was Halloween that this was in, so we began to use effects that were done at Halloween. So, um, and now that it's rendered, I can show it to you. Again, the, the original video effects here, the video, and now how we did that. And this is simply using the uh, the render buffer to move the effect, the, the face effect, over to the side or the next, the next, the next part of the sequence, creating four render buffers and moving each each character in a certain part. Um, but very, very straightforward effects. At the end of this, same, same thing. We go into the the effect settings. Let's close this. We essentially come back, find the find the ma rendering matrix. We right click. We export video again. I have found, you know, that the export uh, we've already we've already uh, rendered it. So I have found that an uncompressed MP4 video is the best quality. The AVI is good, but it's it. It is just a little bit behind, and um, in some cases, it is much larger for less resolution. So, um, my opinion, again, your mileage may vary. Please test it if you're going to be doing this. But I think you'll find the uncompressed MP4 video your best choice uh, to do, do this type of work. And so, in in the sense of this video, what do I have here? Fancy like so. And so this is this this is this is just the effects that just show you what they. they... Okay. 
so we were able to, and these these effects besides the walker haze which came from uh, the, the, the showstoppers all these effects are available in x-light so the the ghost and the pumpkin and the the purple people eater and then we got even Christmas. So we, we got Santa and, you know, but these these talking faces are all there. So they all got in on the got in on the fun. And I, I can tell you, this is the one where people, the kids during Halloween night, they just were like, they spent more time dancing. Than they did trying to get candy, for goodness sake. It was kind of fun. But just a, a way to take you know, a, a sequence that, that has been created by one of the vendors and just kind of juice it up a little bit. And the final one we're going to talk, and we just say cancel. The final one we're going to be talking about is, um, we're going to open sequence. Uh, we're going to do pentonic. So this is a sequence that PPD put out, discard changes. And it's actually also the X lights around the world sequence this year. So let's just say I've already done my X lights around the world sequence. Um, and so we have the same conundrum. We're going to uh, make this a little bit shorter. Sequence settings. Oh, good. It's already at 40. So we'll just we'll render quick. So again, Megan Trainer, um, what we had available for us to do. So the Megan Tra Trainer video, we've kind of seen, seen, seen it. So this is the downloaded video from the internet. And I think we're all going to be sick of that song by Christmas time. Just saying. Um, and so it allows us, I'm trying to figure where I put the DPD sequence. Oh, here it is, right? So this is actually the PPD sequence for this sequence. So in, in the PPD sequencing, they have a garage matrix, but the matrix that, that I use is this higher rendering matrix up in here. Um, and you can see there's some nice effects here that you saw earlier in the or early in the session. So what I decided in this case to do is take what I thought was the some of the more interesting parts of the PPD sequence, and the less in, honestly the less interesting parts of the Megan Trainer sequence, and kind of create a, a, a hybrid of those, and uh, you know enabled us to uh, to have I believe an interesting sequence. Let me just takes well, let's just say Clyde has a lot of effects and it takes a long time to render his sequences, but it's the same, it's the same um, situation. Um, Clyde's also, for those people who do PPD and want to do this, uh, for the benefit of the PPD sequence members, Clyde actually takes the sequences and renders into a video. But for this purposes, you need to not render from the video that Clyde puts in his sequences, but you have to render from raw sequencing. Um, and this also has effects that are uh, are pictures, and they did have to be resized, very similar to how we did the the resizing in in the prior situation. So with that, yeah, and we'll play this. That's special. That's well, the problem with live demos, right? You know how it works. Let's just say it looks really cool. No, we'll just do a time. Any questions at this point while we're getting this one to render? Um, does this make sense? So once you understand, the cool thing about doing this way with the rendering display is that you're just, in, in this display, you're just focused on the matrix. And once you're done with this display, you you move, you, you literally have a, you, you end up with a sequence that is just for the matrix. And then you have the ability, as you saw in in my my display, I put the low I put this the video into my dis, the display, but as in a low resolution version, just because I kind of like to see it. But it's not going to change at all how I'm going to deal with the sequence, um, and it allows me, I, you know, see in a second here the, to create a, a much more interesting display. Well, actually, I do have I do have the video, so this is. So this is this is the sequence rendered at 4:30. This is the sequence rendered at uh, 4:32, basically a 4:32 uh, width resolution, and you can see there is no aliasing of those effects and um, the, the very sharp graphics. Santa looks great, uh, not pixelated, and all the we used all all the effects that uh, Clyde Lindsay put into this display 
it just had to change the size of the pictures, but then brought in, brought in the, uh, where there was more interesting video side. So we have, you know, um, you know, whether that's interesting or not, but this was kind of a, but, you know, took all the effects that Clyde did and then uh, essentially incorporated them into a hybrid, which then goes in, into my, my, my display and allows, again, some interesting. And, and again, in, in my display, I'm going to show it to you if we'll finish kind of here, but in, in my display, I'm going to bring it. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is bring in my sequence for this. Again, lowers up resolution display. And you can still see, you can still, if you go, you can still see the video there, but now you see the effects that I didn't use are still being used in my display. Um, and then, you know, as we get further into the sequence. So, oh, yes, example of different approaches to combining sequences. And just before we do, we do close out on that one, uh, cancel, let me show you. One of the things that I did that I didn't mention in this, this, I won't show it to render it, but to do this in the Clyde Lindsay sequence, what, what was done was where I wanted the effects. So where I wanted the video to show through, I eliminated the effects. And where I didn't want the, the video to show it through, I put an off effect above it. Um, also put a fade out so the transitions would be smooth. And so that's how you essentially suppress. You don't have to cut up the video. You just put off, if you lose it, put it in the bottom layer and use off effects to make it appear and not appear. Uh, the other sequences, the video was on most of the time, but this is how you, you essentially eliminate effects. And sometimes you want them to show through like in the Crowder song, um, and uh, in fancy like we, we, the video is showing all the time, except where it was being blocked by the talking heads. But this is an example of where I wanted to have effects show up, but I didn't want to have the video. So that's how you suppress the, the video with an off effect uh, in the sequence. And, uh, and, and it, it works out really well. So just a couple more, we'll go back to the slides and just kind of as a summary. So one of the things is that in this journey, which I've discovered is that, so in FTP, you have to have the video file name, the exact name of the audio file. They're not somewhat like it. It has to be exactly the same. Um, the channel outputs, um, if you have LED panels, we're gonna be talking that for a couple of minutes. LED panels uh, actually can use the same situation. You can you can play videos on your from with these high resolution videos on your uh, for, on your LED panels, um, but if your res, if your video if your uh, panel is less than you know 108 192, what you probably should do is just have your virtual matrix be the same size. But if you're an overachiever and have, you know, some of these guys where, you know, a P5 panel, this is one on Facebook the other day, it's available for anybody who wants to purchase, looks gorgeous, by the way, and, you know, commercial display, but even, you know, 10 high by nine wide, um, that's, that's, it's only a 320 by 576, but it is, but you could potentially could look at rendering that as half resolution and see how the videos look on it. But again, you can put your, your videos onto it. FPP if you want to play the video, then you don't have to have the videos in your sequence. 
um, at the higher resolution, then you can save a tremendous amount of rendering time for your regular sequences, yet uh, still have the ability to show your videos if you so want to. One of the secret sauce things, you need the sequence file up on FPP, but one of the things you have to do, you set your channel outputs, the LED panels, make them active. Uh, the secret sauce that I learned, and Rick Harris, you're welcome to, is to pixel overlay models. You basically create them from the outputs. I, this is the secret sauce screen. Um, so you have your, your virtual matrix going to LED panels, but pixel overlay models make it. You put the videos on there. You make sure multi-sync is running from your primary player and the magic happens. Um, and so, you know, essentially for projector-based display, um, yes, you can do 108 and 192. Hopefully I've shown you that you really shouldn't. Um, the videos are just, uh, are just, if you're using sequences, if you're using just downloads from the internet, yeah, go for it. You don't need to do this, but anytime you want to have sequence type effects on your videos, they, they have to have the higher resolution. For I believe that 216 MP4s are sufficient for videos, especially it, where the videos have, you know, mostly video effects and not X lights effects. But if you have a, a, a sequence that has lots of X-Lights effects and the video, like the Megan Trainer song from PPD, the way I meant it, I do render that at the 432.768. Um, it does take some time, but honestly, I do it in the background um, and I do other things while it's rendering. Um, and then finally, a virtual matrix projector. Again, the, you, you basically, the matrix resolution from a virtual matrix slash pixel panel or even garage matrix is determined by the number of pixels or the number of panels. Um, you know, again, when if a P5 size approaches uh, 108, 192, you could probably benefit if you change the video. And but if it's much less than that, the lower resolutions may benefit, but the the, the benefit may be not to justify. And you may want to just continue rendering your effects as you do now and send the FC data to to the virtual matrix. And and just just in leaving, just to reinforce the point and. You know, the, the the thing is that, you know, Santo's coming to town, discard changes. Let's get rid of this. Discard changes. No. Oh. So this, again, where, where this is all going, you know, it's... Can't hear it, Kevin. Okay, let me stop sharing and I don't think thanks, Alan. Tell me, Alan, you could hear the other ones though, did you? So this is friends. Please be a good elf. For a virtual matrix using a 1080 video projector to create high resolution video. We heard that one, but didn't see your. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, three, third time would be the charm. With the same name as sequence audio file. Stay jolly, my friends. For a virtual matrix using now a 1080 video projector. To create high resolution video files, in the layout window, set matrix size to 216 pixels high and 384 pixels wide. In X Lite Sequencer, export matrix model effects as a non compressed MP for video file, name the file with the same name as sequence audio file. Stay jolly, my friends. And with that, uh, we'll leave it open for questions, and hopefully, this was informative and will help you make some decisions about how you want to do your virtual matrices. Kevin, I've got another question for you. Um, in yeah. reference to you using a video projector versus P5 panels, is there one that you prefer over the other by for whatever reason? Uh, personally, I think whether you use a virtual, one of the limitations of a, uh, basically a projector is have a place to project to. So if you, in my display, I have a, a two car garage that goes directly to the uh, street. Um, but if you don't have a garage, then it makes you have to find a surface to project. 
and that may 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 make sense to then use the P5 P5 panels instead because you can put them wherever you want to put them. And the other thing I didn't mention, it could also be a TV set. So put a TV set up on your porch it will be the same thing. The TV would be the same as a virtual projector. Use the HDMI output uh, from F FTP into that projector or in this, you know, 50, you know, some, a 50 inch television set that's on your, up on your porch or you know, whatever. So, you know, I, I think P5 panels are, 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 are pretty, pretty spectacular if used the same way, but um, you know, bigger is better. And if you want to go 14 feet wide, that's kind of impractical with, with a P5 panel scenario, but the projector allows you a little bigger. Okay. Kyle, you have a question? Thanks. Yeah, I was just curious, have you ever dealt with your projector wagging with FPP? Actually, no, I have not seen that. Um, no. uh, so I have, I my projector has a Pi 4 in it um and uh lots of memory but i've never seen lagging um i i actually though um found that in, i was using x schedule last year to run the projector this year i'm going to switch to fpp but i did turn off multi basically as a setting in fpp that you can put in the advanced menu you can essentially suppress sync packets during your your, your show and so it starts on time and i found that it really stays up it really doesn't vary from that over the three or four minutes of a sequence but like anything test to see how it works in your scenario okay mine was mine was definitely stuttering before turning that checkbox off yep okay i'll try that because yeah i set up that 1080 the other day got it all working it looks super pixelated so that'll be helpful to help get all that fixed but it, it was very choppy and laggy so. Yeah, it's choppy and laggy. Again, it's it's under the you have to go to the advanced menu and Rick can correct it or run or if they're on. Um, but it's a setting. It's just basically suppress uh, sync packets. So, Kevin, do you got an FPP handy or no? No, not on this. I I have one here. I'm trying to pull it up right now. If you want me to share it, I can, Daryl. Yeah, please. I don't know that I know where that setting is exactly at, but I don't mind sharing. And you guys can. It's under video output settings if you're in the advanced mode. Yeah, here we go. You say input output? Uh, yeah, but it's on. Status FPP settings, video. Status, F status control FPP settings, video. See, so ignore media sync packets. So it gets the first one and then ignores the, the subsequent ones. And I found in my display when I, you know, it, Rick and his manual had a little allusion to that. And I've, I've used it and I used it on your display, Alan, when you had your problem. So whether that's yeah. the correct way to fix it or not, whatever works. <laughs> Alan, leave that there a sec. Also on this, we have default video output device. In that drop down, I believe is also LED panels. If you have panels, would you need to use that as well? No, it go down where it says HDMI. Uh, no, maybe it doesn't. No panel panels. Your output would be would yeah. usually be color light card. Um, audio video panels are not an HDMI output. They're usually to a color light card, and you set them up under the uh, LED devices. I just thought when we were playing the other night when we were yeah, all talking about we switched video. it to LED panels there. It was there, right, Brad? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess if you have them, it's there. If you don't have them, it's, it won't show up. So, so Brad, you, we were talking the other night. So, has this helped you? I mean, in terms of being able to keep your sequence quality the way you want and cut down the time of rendering? I'm training this week, so I haven't screwed with it too much. Uh, I'll do a little bit more over the weekend. I'm actually going to pull out one of the bigger screens, but yeah, no, I was able to drastically reduce my FSEQ files. And um, if I go even farther and do what you did, where you just out exported the videos uh, or exported what was to be on the uh, screens, I could probably go even farther, but no, I mean, pulling out of my eight by seven, LED panel P5. I mean, I was shrinking some of my FSEQ files by two to three gigs. And not having that in there, the render times are ridiculously 
slower or faster. On yeah, both so you, the laptop yeah. and the Mac. Yeah, I mean, the key is you basically pay the video rendering penalty once, and then you don't have to worry about it again unless you, you know, you don't have to have the video in your, your sequence showing in your, you know, in your, on your layout, but you can see how you can easily put it in at very low resolution and still kind of get the idea of what it's going to look like. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, Kevin, now you have two, say, separate layouts you're using to do that. Correct. I you have, have a, your one with the very low resolution just as a guide of where it's going to go, but you don't put that in your, that's not in your visualizer. So, so no, you, you, no, let me, it's a little more subtle than that. Um, so this matrix is in my display. It does get rendered, but it's not assigned to a controller. Right. That's so, what I mean. so it, whether, it, and, you know, and I think that the data is there at the end of the stream and maybe even not, but so this is, this is my, this is my display, my, this is my layout for Christmas. Um, so I do put the videos that I've created in the, the, the high resolution process into here just because I like, look, you know, kind of want to see when I'm doing it. But, We're not seeing your screen. Oh, You're I'm sorry. Um, I forgot. We've been doing this with COVID for years. Okay, so essentially, this is my so the display I was showing you before with the three screens. Yep. I just I just use so it's not a view; it is actually a separate layout. Okay, that's that's what I'm saying. It's a separate yeah. layout that you yeah. do your video rendering. Yeah, right, exactly. And then what I do once I create the video, um, then what I do is I put it as a video effect on this matrix and on this one. On this okay. one, yeah, yeah. So and the video, yeah. Let me show you. The, the sequence of so the, the video that I have on the matrix is here. And so, so it's Crowder high full F MP4. So in fact, you know, for this, it's, it's, it's on my desktop. And not but that's there, the but video you made in it, the that's other. The, it, that's, yeah, that's the video I made with the other process. In the other layout. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? James has his hand raised. So uh, I am actually working with my P5 tonight, <clears throat> and I've just now received my, my second color card because the initial problem was that uh, I didn't I didn't have a high enough refresh rate, and so I just got my uh, my power supplies and my color light card. I got everything connected. And it seems to be playing the video a whole lot better, but the it's still very uh, pixelated and blurry. On and I was I was curious as to <laughs> is there other places to change resolution or, or or change your settings other than the color light uh, uh, configuration model? Yeah. So th this is kind of a misconception. You can't increase the resolution of your videos to get your car light to look better. The the car the, or the your P5 panels to look better. They will only now you can match the resolution of your virtual matrix in your X lights layout to be exactly the same size or whatever your configuration is. You know, do the math, and that's probably the best way you can assure that whatever you're rendering is pixel for pixel going to show up on the on your P5 panels. But at some point, you know, um, you, you're not going to be able to get the resolution of some of these, you know, a full 10, 1080p projector because they're just less pixels. And there has to there has to be there has to be, you know, a compromise there. OK, so if I split my P5 panel to two color light cards, right, do I need to split it in X lights to... I, I would need to defer to others because I've not done that. Um, I do have a P5 panel in my display as a tune to sign, but it only has one car link card in it. Okay. My understanding is you're not going to create more pixels doing that. You may create a higher refresh rate that may help in the, in the sense of making your, your sequences look better, but. You, yeah. You Cause still... I mean, this is a, it, the, the sequence that I'm trying to run it. I mean, it's a paid sequence. Um, and the video that runs on the P5, I mean, it's, 
it's not like super I, I guess the video itself is is uh, a 1080p but um but coming off of my panel i mean you, you could barely make out what's going on with it and how big is your panel it's uh six wide six high i mean that should only have needed one color light i wonder if the settings need adjusted like in either an led vision or or something yeah you should only need one color light for that well i i spoke with uh um oh Maynard. Uh, Mendoza, Minor, he, yeah. Minor, uh and he helped me set it up and he he was pretty adamant that uh I, I was minus about two power supplies and and I needed another color light card because he couldn't get the refresh rate to go to the 1920 that he wanted and would be able to play the video that I was wanting to play. Well I don't know that you'll ever get 1920 out of a P5 panel unless it's super massive. It'd have to be bigger, bigger than six by six. Well, he was talking about the refresh rate in the color light settings the other night with Miner. James, yeah, I, James I can we thing. hold up on the rest of this yeah. until after we're done with yeah. the presentation? My, my wife is calling anyway. So okay. Anybody else me. have any questions for Kevin? Well, Kevin, we want to thank you for that. There's a lot of good information there and Hopefully we get a lot more better videos out of our, on our projectors and stuff. So thank you very much, Kevin. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for everybody and apologize for a couple of the uh, tattoo glitches, but hopefully that didn't impact the content that was being delivered.